Welcome back to Burnt Denim. Back again. The podcast where we instill passion. Dang it. Where we <laughs> spread knowledge, instill passion, and generate conversation. My name is Max. My name is Nick. And we are so glad to be here. We are your co-hosts. Um, and before we hop into our Is It Justified, which is going to be very interesting this week, we would just love to explain what we're wearing today, explain our fits. So Nick, would you explain that fit? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know me, some days I'm in my Yeezys, some days I'm in my Vans. Yep. So today I'm wearing my Vans old school, black and white, simple, plain simple, fit. Not, no uh, moving up, I'm wearing some black uh, Ralph Lauren, Ralph Lauren, however you want to say it, trousers, um, slacks, whatever word you want to say for it but just black pants and then a yeezy shirt it is donda west on the front the memorial and on the back rob kardashian i've worn it before yeah um, i like this shirt i like it a lot i love i love nick's uh style it's very universal it's not too loud but it if you know you know that's what i if you know you know push your teeth yes and so let's see what am i wearing i went a little different i am wearing the black minimal snap cargos uh, minimal, you could have done a little bit better quality control, but I still like them. <laughs> um, I'm wearing the Essentials Charcoal Gray Tee. Love it. The Fear of God um, New Era Cap. And then my favorite, I'm wearing my favorite shoe in my collection. Not my most valuable, but my favorite. And that is, I gotta show it. <laughs> Sorry. The Nike Fear of God one in oatmeal. Really love it. Just because it looks like oatmeal and I enjoy oatmeal. And so that's what I'm wearing today. And that is Explain That Fit. Explain That Fit. So moving forward, we have a very special episode today uh, going over a very, again, controversial topic, but also one that I think a lot of people are interested in and a lot of people aren't I think it's sure one-sided on. too in the view. Yeah, I think it, kind of. it's one-sided. And then every now and then you'll have the other person that's like r- making the argument and they are kind of like just out there. Right. So I think it's good to, to bring the full picture here. Yeah. Um. So today we're going to be going over, is it justified to wear clothing outside of your lifestyle? Mm. So let me explain what that means. A lot of people now will wear Harley Davidson shirts. However, not a lot of people will drive Harley Davidson motorcycles. A lot of people will wear uh, skate brands like Supreme or Thrasher or different things like that. Not all those people skate, so on and so forth, from workwear to um, athletic clothes to di- different things like that. So we're going to um, dive deeper into that and have both sides of the conversation. Again, we say this all the time. Our arguments are not necessarily representative of what we truly believe. We're just trying to give you guys the full conversation, explain to you guys both sides, yep. just have constructive dialogue yep. around the conversation. It's again, that third part of our mantra, generate conversation. That's what we're trying to do. And as always, make sure to comment, like, subscribe, whatever it is, so we can get your feedback yep. on this as well, too. So if, again, we might leave some things out, and we know you guys have some important thoughts on this, so go ahead and add that as we um, as we move forward with the conversation. Yep. So Max, do you want to start us off? Yeah. Is it justified to wear clothing outside of your lifestyle? I'm going to say nah, bruh, or no, it is not. I think okay. that I have a few points. I'm really going to hone in on one. I'll do some of the other ones first. Um, but I want to lead off with a quote. I know you're not necessarily always supposed to do this in essays or whatever, but <laughs> I'm going to lead off with a quote. And it's from Jake Phelps. He's the man behind Thrasher. Brother He's a of senior. Michael. Yep. <laughs> no. He's the <laughs> senior editor at Thrasher Magazine. He helped start it. And in an interview with Hypebeast, he was asked, what do you think about pop culture wearing you know, your clothes, wearing skatewear? Hmm. And his response was very opinionated. And he stated in this interview, we, as in Thrasher, don't send boxes to Justin Bieber or Rihanna or any of those expletive clowns. The pavement is where the real stuff is. Blood (laughs) and scabs. Does it get any realer than that? Hmm. So Jake Phelps, the man who started Thrasher, a brand that many people wear today, um, especially non-skaters wear Thrasher. Uh, The man who started it literally was saying, the street is where that real, you know, the real culture is of Thrasher. We don't send boxes to these pop culture stars. And so that's kind of what I want to start off with is that when you wear something outside of what you actually do or outside of your actual lifestyle, you're posing in and trying to fit in oftentimes. Now, there are a lot of clothing, a lot of pieces of clothes that are kind of universal 
they're not really for one. Like mm -hmm. we talked about the jeans and the Levi's. That's not outside of anybody's like lifestyle because I don't know. No, because it's 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 it was created not only for miners, but then it became you know they adapted to farmers. They adapted. The Levi's themselves have created collaborations with different people in different lines of of work, different lines of lifestyle, and so. I'm talking specifically about things like a Harley shirt or a Carhartt shirt or, you know, Thrasher gear or, you know, things that you don't do, but when you wear it, you're almost posing. Hmm. So I think pop culture and celebrities, when they find a new trend that they like, they wear it and then everybody follows suit and they don't care about the subculture behind the clothing. You know, they see a celebrity wear it, they see a celebrity wear a piece of Carhartt, you know, Kanye's been doing that, or they yeah. see a celebrity wear a Thrasher shirt and they're like, I need to wear it. You know, they're just following trends. They're, they're almost posing. Um, and a good analogy to this is it's like the person who lives in Southern California who has a surf rack on their car, but they never surf. You're really posing. Mm. You, when you wear these clothing that's outside of your lifestyle, you're pretending to be somebody that you're not. And I think at the same time, you subconsciously convince yourself that you're a part of that sub subculture. And that you, you almost like find security in clothing, which is not a healthy thing. You shouldn't be finding security in clothing. You shouldn't be, you know, trying to fit in. I think we do it a lot of times. I've been guilty of this before, I will admit. But I think that it's not a healthy thing if you can help it. And it's not something that, that you should be doing, especially when groups like Thrasher, which is this tight-knit skating, uh, you know, group they are even saying themselves, yeah, I mean, we don't really support other people wearing this. We want the skaters to be wearing this thing. Hmm. And when it comes from the mouth, you know, of the horse, when it comes from them themselves, that, that says something to me as well. And, and, you know, if I'm sure if you asked a biker who is a Harley, you know, rider with all these people wearing Harley, they'd be like, I mean, they probably don't care because they just want to yeah. ride, but they're like, yeah, they're posing. I don't know. Here, here's the thing about trends and the nature of trends a lot of people are very anti-trend right now um, but that's and, a trend and itself. my thought on this is that if you liking things just because they're popular i don't think that's good but disliking things because they're popular i think is equally bad and i think a lot of people do that to where people are like oh it's just popular so you know i don't like it i want to be different i don't think that's good either because that has nothing to do with your actual thoughts and your actual reflections. The thing about trends, they are not good or bad in and of themselves. They present, can be. They present new ideas to different people. For example, um, for example, when skinny jeans are a trend, there are people that would never wear skinny jeans. It becomes a trend and they are exposed to a new cut. I don't think, you know, though, I would say, well, sorry to interject, I would say that Trends don't introduce something new. They can, but oftentimes they resurface something that was already popular at one point. They cycle. So I don't think the purpose of trends is to necessarily introduce something new. I think it's to get people to feel comfortable and to fit in right. and to get people, you know, not force them to actually like. But even then, it's new to that people. So like a 17 year old, like a, not 17, like imagine like someone's like 13 and then they see things from the 90s, then. It's new to them. So that's saying you were never born in the 90s, so you can never like anything it's true. interesting no, I'm to just that. Kidding. I'm not um, also, too, with Harley, if you never ride a motorcycle and you have never been exposed to Harley in the first place and you see a T-shirt, Harley, and then you buy that and then it gets you invested into the brand, like from that way, it's kind of like a I new think track to kind of – lead you into that subculture if, if you yeah, don't, I don't think if but you don't I, have I disagree access with that. to it ever Sorry, then how on. are you supposed hold to on. get into it in the first place uh, you just said that it gives you a track to lead you into that subculture I guarantee you people who are wearing Harley a lot of people are wearing Harley now that are either teenagers or just people who are like wearing it with this mass popularity are not wearing it because they want to become a part of the biking subculture I can 99% guarantee that I think that when people wear it there are people who wear it because they like the graphic, but so many people are wearing it because it's what's popular. This is a whole conversation on popularity and fitting in. And I think that that can be dangerous. And um, if you're wearing it simply because you truly, truly like the graphic, that's different. But I think if you really look deep down, a lot of people are wearing it to fit in. I think people wear a lot of things to fit in. And I think it takes a special you know, kind of person to be able to break from the trends, but that's what should happen. And, and, and you said being anti-pop or anti, 
um, trend can be right. a bad thing. I, yeah, it is bad. I don't think it's bad. I think an, being anti-trend forces you to get outside of what's popular now and look to the future. But here's the thing. Being anti-trend means that your style is always subject to trends because when a trend comes up, you're like, I don't like that just because it's a trend. So I'm going to do something completely I think opposite okay, I think that, if you're right? anti all trends, that's bad. But you can be anti-specific trends. You can be anti-trend of wearing things outside of your work, which is what we're talking about. Wearing things outside of your lifestyle. I don't know. So I think... So Nick, I'm about to pull a real big <laughs> gun on you. I'm about to pull out. A, I'm about to pull a secret weapon out. Psychology. Okay, you <laughs> oh can't gosh. argue with this. I found an article by Brain Fodder, which is a website about psychology. Science just gives you little digestible bits. It um, seems. Um, I know. Oh, you want me to let you? I looked up the author and everything. It's trustworthy. Okay. Seven ways. The, the, I read an article called Seven Ways Your Clothes Change the Way You Think." Okay, okay. I read this. I did my research, people. And one of the points was that um, certain clothing, and it was, it was about like um, fitting in and, and wearing clothes to kind of, you know, with what the norm is. And uh, they, they were saying that certain clothing can actually activate specific knowledge and determines our, our expectations and how we think. So they hmm. did an experiment that showed that a participant that simply wore a lab coat when doing uh, a task would actually pay more attention and they ended up making less mistakes. So subconsciously clothing determines um, like how you act, how you think, what your expectations are. And I'm going to tie this in. I know you're probably wondering. Therefore, wearing clothing from, from companies like Harley or Thrasher when you don't skate, you don't bike, can subconsciously make you feel as though you are a part of that subculture when in fact you are not. Yeah. So, oh, what are you going to say back I, to this? So go I, ahead. Oh my gosh. So go ahead. literally psychology shows that when you wear certain clothing, it changes how you act. I mean, that seems pretty logical outside of it, but, but it shows specifically that you think that you become a, <laughs> that you become a part of that subculture. And so I think that can be dangerous too, because you're going to subconsciously think that you can skate well. Like you may not say it out loud, but subconsciously you're going to be like, I could skate if I need to, or I could bike when you can't, I'm sorry, people, if you want to get into that, that's different. But right. So I'm at the flip the switch on you. I think what you gave me actually supports my argument. Because here's no, the thing. It does not. Like, like you were just saying, when people wear a lab coat, that's, that's good for them because it helps their brain perform better. I never said it was good for them. But it doesn't help their brain perform better. It makes them focus more. Exactly. And they make less so mistakes because they're focused. Thing. That's a good Nick, thing. this here's is specifically a lab coat. We've all heard the phrase, dress for the job you want, not the one that you have. So if you are having psychological issues talking and about you do jobs. need to I'm talking improve, about a day-to-day -day life. And if you do need to improve in certain areas. Are you trying to tell then me? Then you can... Wear those things to get better at those things. Are you That's telling good. me? Just hold on. So that means you can choose things that are outside of your subculture if you want to, like, for example, if you want to be smarter or you want people to think that you're smarter, you can wear glasses. Oh, That's you just hit on thing. a point. Hold on, hold That's on, hold on, thing. hold on. He just hit on a point. Nick was pulling out some bull crap. I'm about to say this. Nick, <laughs> you said if you want people to think you're smarter, that is my entire point. You're wearing this because you want people to think something of you. And right. that is dangerous. You... Nick also tried to say that it's an outlet to this subculture and that you can become better at it. Again, how many people are wearing Carhartt because they're doing hard labor? How many people are wearing Harley because know. they're biking? How many people are wearing Thrasher know. because they go to the skate park? Come on, man. I'm saying that it is dangerous because you're trying to fit in. If you want to be a part of that subculture, I'm not saying don't be a part of that. I'm saying be a part of it and then wear the stuff. Right. So here, here's the thing. Let's, let's stick to that glasses thing because I think it's representative of a better right, argument. Let's stick to it. People are naturally judgmental. Like psychologically, you don't have the capacity to get to everyone, to get to know everyone on a deep level. So you have to make those quick snap biases. judgments. You have biases. About, exactly. Right. So when it comes to glasses, if I'm going to a job interview that is like something Nick, like that. I understand the job interview thing. I'm talking your, about. We're not talking about that. You want to present yourself well to a certain like group you want to be fit in and be accepted by that group, okay. which is not bad. Have which you seen, is not bad. Here's my question. Especially if you're trying to improve yourself. Here's my question. Have and you ever seen a, a movie? That is, you ever higher. seen the, any movie where someone wears something to a job interview or lies or like they wear glasses to make, to make them seem smart. Then they actually get the job and then the boss finds out that they actually don't need glasses and then they, you're creating a lie. You, you may be, I think it's, you're lying. I don't know. Here's so, the thing. Cinderella was never a princess until she became one. 
right? So she presented Cinderella herself. Cinderella is a false she story. She presented herself. Cinderella is a fairy tale, but bro. But it's representative of the argument. She presented herself in a way that did not fit the subculture that she was a part of. She was accepted by that popular culture. Okay. And then after, will... after they were exposed to her from that, they did accept her. And the prince actually pursued okay. her out despite her naturally not something. wearing that stuff normally. I will concede to you. That if a fairy godmother comes down <laughs> oh and God. grants you a pumpkin that turns into a carriage, <laughs> then it's okay. But another point I really want to make is that when you wear these things outside of your lifestyle and, and you really follow those trends and those norms, it discourages creative thinking from breaking from the norm to fitting in. And, and you think about revolutionaries who were revolutionary, whether it's clothing or outside of clothing, they broke from the mold and created a new style. Perhaps by combining influences from these different subcultures, but not simply following suit and wearing all that subculture. I think um, of, for example, Off-White, right? He took these construction lines, these arrows, these things, these, and combined them with streetwear. We look at Supreme, combined streetwear with this great culture. We look at, let's look outside of fashion. Steve Jobs, right? The marketing genius, perhaps one of the greatest mm -hmm. marketers of our time. He wore the same outfit every single day. Albert Einstein did too. That wasn't normal. Mark Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg. Then. I mean, Mark Zuckerberg's a robot. He's not a human, so that doesn't count. But what I'm saying is that when you try to follow these trends, you never get get to like creatively think for yourself, and you never get to like combine different influences from different cultures because you're strictly wearing that thing. Like, I'm not saying you can't go wear an outfit of of you know these different cultures, but if you're constantly wearing them and that becomes your style, you just follow you know outside of your lifestyle, whether it's Harley, whatever it is then it's not allowing you to creatively think and, and, and create something new. And I know not everybody wants to create something new, and I think that's sad, but... I don't know. Here, here is my main argument, that all this is way too hard to regulate because everything has origins from specific subcultures, like we talked about. Denim, initially it was made for gold miners. So if you're not a gold miner, you can't wear it. You know what I mean? No, because then, Levi's themselves adapted because they wanted more people to wear them. Uh, the, Levi Strauss created for the gold miners, but then he created it for farmers. Right. Then he but, created it for industrial workers. And but then, Levi's followed, like they didn't make make it for all these people. Like they made it for miners and then cowboys wore it. And I then just, they made it for cowboys. So they followed that. I don't think, but that's the creator. So they can do that. I think, look, I, I led with that, that quote from Jake Phelps from Thrasher, right? I think that it has to be something that's specifically from made for a certain type of people. Levi's was made for the masses. Let's be real. Thrasher was made for skaters. Carhartt was made for people right. who work. But Harley was made for bikers. Here's the thing. Those, Levi's is an extreme situation. What if it comes to something like that? that's functional in other areas of life? Like what? You know, like a baseball hat. You know, a baseball hat. You know, those you are made for the fans, even, though. Even if you well. don't wear baseball, those are made for they, the fans they as well. They wear them on on the field. They do, but they also make them for the fans. Okay, that's an intent. And then what about things like basketball shorts if you don't play basketball, tennis shoes if you don't play tennis? Okay, tennis shoes don't even bowl that Soccer one Soccer sweats, that's weak. different things like that. All these different things were made for specific groups, and then they were adopted by other groups that became popular. So why can that not apply to specific? brands like Harley, like Carhartt, especially if other people are being introduced to those things for the first time and they genuinely like the aesthetic. Right. If you like the look, but you're not a part of the subculture, does that mean that you can't enjoy no, the look I, for I, what I it is? I, I think you can enjoy it for what it is, but I think oftentimes you're, you're wearing it to fit in. And I think you're wearing it, even, it could even be subconsciously. And like I said, I've been guilty of this. I know you've been guilty of this. We've all been guilty of this. But I just think that if it becomes a norm where you follow, you know, specifically trends, I, I want to do a whole episode on trends um, on one week on, on um, is it justified? We touched on it here. But I just think that specifically these companies like Harley that make stuff for bikers or, or um, cause Harley, their main line of business isn't even clothing, right? Their main line of business is creating motorcycles. Right. The, the clothing is for, you know, those people who ride the motorcycle. I just think you're posing. I just think that you're, you're pretending to be something you're not. And I think that a lot of listeners right now could also see that, that, you, that you're trying to pose. You're trying to be something that you're not. You're trying to subconsciously convince yourself that you're a part of that subculture or make people think so. Like first encounter, you know. Um, but I, I guess we'll have to let the people decide. Yeah. Again, 
We haven't said what we believe. We haven't said. I think it's a mix. We have a mix. But yeah, yeah. But we just want to present both sides. Yeah. So again, uh, comment. Let us know your thoughts, too. I'm sure there's plenty of arguments that we missed. There's some that I'm sure that we had that we didn't even get to say. Right. Um, so let us know because mm-hmm. we want your feedback. Again, say it every single episode. Burnt Denim does not end with me and Max. It is a community thing that you are a part of also. Yes. So please give us feedback. Yep. So our next segment, as many of you know, is asking for a friend. And this is a segment where we take questions from you guys, our listeners, our viewers, um, and we just kind of dissect them a little bit. Mm -hmm. So this week we have uh, three different people who gave us some interesting questions. Um, And so we want to dive into those with the remaining time we have. So the first one is from my friend Nupa. And he asks, how do you dress for a date if you're a man? I think his specific words were, how do you get the drip for the chicks? So, so we just thought we'd word it a little nice. So, um, so Nick, do you want to start off? If how would you dress for a date if you're a man to make a good um, impression? This kind of relates to our conversation, right, right. not posing, but like how would you dress? Right. So, a couple of things. I think it depends. Maybe on the subculture you're part of. No, get um, out of here. For example, if you are like. If you're a millionaire, you're not going to go out in like basketball okay. shorts or something like that. Well, However, what about Mark Zuckerberg? Okay, well, well, <laughs> Sorry. I, uh, I think what I'm trying to say is it has to fit the occasion and okay. what you guys yeah. are doing. So again, if you're going to the river, like we can't make this blanket statement and be like, you know, wear a tuxedo because you want to look good. No, if you're going to the river to go yeah. like kayaking or something like that for the first date, you want to like dress to the occasion. If you're going to the movies... Um, you want to dress to the occasion. If yep. you're going out to dinner at somewhere fancy, you want to fit that environment. So I guess it all depends on what you guys are doing for the first date. Yeah. Yeah, I agree too. I think uh, it definitely is situational. Mm, but I think there are some overarching concepts that can right. apply. I think you should always look like you put thought into it, right? That seems that could go without saying, but you don't want to look sloppy. You don't want to look like you threw it together last minute. Um, and I'm also not saying, you know, you need to spend hours agonizing over it, but it is important to to dress nice and to put thought right. into what you're wearing. Uh, even if you wouldn't call yourself like a fashionista or fashion enthusiast, you need to put time into what you're wearing. So if you're going out to a nice restaurant, put on some nice slacks, some nice pants, yeah. some dress shoes, a nice button up, make sure it's ironed. You know, I think ironing, you know, I think that's a blanket statement too. Even if you're wearing a t-shirt, ironing is so important mm-hmm. making sure that it's not wrinkly because that is a telltale sign that you don't care about what that you, you present like. yourself well that you are grooming you know I've even, it's, it's like a deeper thing but also too i'd say if you are going to be wrong meaning i don't know what i'm gonna wear so i have two options i can either underdress or overdress i'd say overdress, overdress. yes um, overdress. I, that's that's my thoughts on that i think uh, yeah yeah and and like uh, I've even back to the ironing thing. I've even ironed like vintage clothing um, that had wrinkles in it. Like it doesn't. Some people may not do that, but I think when you iron and there's no wrinkles, you just look nice. So I think that's another overarching thing. Um, and also, don't be afraid to be yourself. Uh, that right. sounds so cheesy, and it sounds like it's in a self-help book or something. <laughs> but it's so true when you dress. Um, don't try to dress. I mean, dress nice and follow some principles, but don't try to be someone you're not. Right, like if you're if you're on a casual date, wear the clothing that you right. like. If it's Jordans and you know cargo shorts and this, okay. Um, or if you are if you always dress up, then dress up. You know, um, yourself. I think it's different really when you go cool. to a restaurant that has you know like guidelines. Roots, roots but, Chris, like you have to wear. Right. Like, don't don't be wearing like you know. But um, but don't be afraid to be yourself. Make sure you iron and that there's no wrinkles in there, and make sure you dress to the occasion. Yeah, that's that's a great question because I think a lot of people. Are curious. Yeah. Thank you, Nupa, for that. Love you. Um, next question is from Maddie Samadurov. She asks, is Champion worth it? Because it used to be so cheap, but now it's so expensive. So we are going to do, we will do an episode on Champion right. and their rise to prominence and to what they are today. Um, but this is kind of just a general question. Nick, do you think it's worth it? I think vintage champion is worth it here's Mm. the thing about champion is like there there's layers to it that a lot of people don't know we'll go over this in the episode but champion literally invented the hoodie yeah a lot of people don't know that a very interesting so so champion vintage champion it has the best like fit and quality and sometimes the best fade because they've naturally just been around longer so that's how it plays out so i'd say vintage champion like a vintage champion hoodie i definitely would pay like a good amount for a good amount for yeah um just because it 
it fits so well and it works with so many other things and the quality is so high. Yeah. But I think a lot of people think like when you think of old champion to the average person, they'll think of Walmart champion. Right. So I think there's layers. We're talking further back. There's a vintage high quality champion hoodie. Then there's a Walmart champion with the weird C yeah, and the now C9 there's like the, or whatever. There's like the like it's like a C and then like another thing. Yeah, like a nine thing. or something. Yeah, yeah. So there's that, and then there's what's now I I consider like the Pack Sun Champion. Yes. To where they just have like random throw the logo on and charge people like fifty dollars yeah. for a T-shirt. So yes. I'd say Vintage Champion, yes. Walmart Champion, no. Pack Sun Champion, I'd say no to that as well. Yes. I think Nick uh, hit the nail on the head. Um, if you're going to find that vintage piece, that's a historical piece as well. Cause it's a, an original hoodie or it's something like that. And, and I think, um, a lot of prominent music artists too also print their merch on champion hoodies on champion yeah. blanks, uh, you know, along with guild and these other ones. Um, so I think I'm going to, uh, basically side with Nick on, no, I don't really like the, the pack sun champion. I don't think it's worth it. Right. I think you can find a for lot sure. of cooler brands for, or vintage stuff for cheaper. Um, and it just looks tacky yeah. to me and very, t- uh, too colorful. Also with that, um, you know, Walmart champion, if you're getting it for a pair of running shorts, pretty cheap. Sure. But it's not also like really worth it. Um, I think it is worth it again, if it's vintage or if it is a, uh, was printed on a champion blank and it, it has significance to you. Like it was right. a concert you went to or it was a yeah. a piece of So you know, if you have $60 merch. to spend, go on like Depop or eBay or something like that. Grails. Buy like an 80s, 90s champion hoodie yeah. versus like a brand new Paxson hoodie. Right. That, that's my thoughts on that. I would agree too. Thank Again, you, Maddie. Good question. For good that question. question. Thank you, Maddie. Our final question is a very, very, very important and interesting one. And this comes yeah. from Emily Wadsworth. She says... Have you ever bought a piece of clothing that you regretted later? How do you avoid this? And is it possible? Is it actually possible to buy timeless pieces? Right. So, Nick, do you want to start off with? Uh, have you ever bu- Have you ever bought a piece of clothing that you regretted later? Oh yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, Can you tell me about it? Yeah, I'm trying to think of a specific thing um, that I bought that I'm like. Um, I guess it could be shoes too. It doesn't just have to be clothing. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. Okay. Okay. I got one. So I, I I remember, um, so first my thoughts on this is have you ever bought a piece of clothing that you regretted later? Yeah. Yes. Um, with me, I've, there's like a little while where I just buy like a whole bunch of like random Supreme things. If you haven't listened to our last episode, it was on Supreme. So go check that out too. But also I'd buy Supreme things just because it was Supreme, not knowing like the actual thing, because I was like just starting to get into like knowing a lot about fashion, um, knowing a lot about streetwear, realizing when Supreme does the, their releases and stuff. So I would buy like a t-shirt just because it was t-shirt. And one of the interesting things about Supreme is it sells out so fast that you have to be so quick with buying things on the website and whatever color basically you can get. Yeah. So me, it's like one of my first Supreme releases where I'm trying to get something like a cool t-shirt that I found. I go on, um, eight o'clock, whatever it is. I'm like looking, I go on a t-shirt that I want sold out in the color that I want. Oh, so I go to worst. like, I go to like a hot pink color and I'm Come like, on now. Well, it's still there. <laughs> so I need to get it while I have a chance. And it was very like an impulse decision. So yeah. I got it. And then eventually like I got it like in hand. I'm like, okay, I'm definitely never going to wear this. Right. This doesn't fit anything that I have. Um, I thought it was cool in the moment and it was an impulse decision. But if I wore this, it, it would be one of those things like I'd be uncomfortable wearing it. And I don't think you should wear things that are so outside of your style that you are uncomfortable and that you're walking around constantly like, dang, like this is like trash, you know, He's like this doesn't even He's fit me. But, He's my but anyways, it's more so like a comfortable thing um, because there's been times like I've bought something just because I thought it was like cool and like expensive but I actually didn't like like it like that item even that item in specific listen up people um anyways so I I think there's that aspect but on the other side I think the cool thing about fashion is that it's always changing always developing and your personal style is changing as well that goes back to my thoughts about trends 
when you are developing your fashion style, you don't have one in the first place. So there's literally trial and error okay. versus the fits that you like, the brands that you like, uh, the colors that work best with you, um, the pieces that fit subcultures that you are interested in, want to be a part of, uh, that you like the aesthetic, different things like that. I think trends are good for exposing you. So it is, it is not bad to try a trend Okay. And then it doesn't work out because, you know, it's with the trend and you can kind of just get, get rid of it. It's like trial and error. You found out that it doesn't work for you. Um, but every once in a while, a trend will come along. You'll try it and you do like it. Right. So and then that you incorporate that into your personal style long term, even after that hype of the trend has passed. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, for example, uh, Nike Dunks, super popular right now for better or for worse. I'd say better because it's exposing people to that that may have not been exposed before. So you can like a Nike Dunk, get it, and then the hype behind it goes away, but you were exposed to that. And so, I like Nike Dunks that fit me. So yes, I will wear in the future. So back to the question, do you think it's possible to buy timeless pieces? Uh, I think it is, but with that, it has to be trial and error and you have to... F- develop de- develop have the experience. your style, decide what you like, fits okay. your body the best. Um, things that you're interested in, have sentimental attachment to them okay. and then keep those for long term. Because if you find something from a trend that you like and does fit you and the trend passes, you found out that it fits you and okay. you like it, not because it's popular, but okay. because you like it. So yeah, yeah, that, that's my, that's a long answer for a short question. No, yeah, that's good. But it's good. It, 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 it needs to have a long answer. And I think also I have, um, bought she, well, I don't think I've honestly bought clothing just uh, that I regretted just because of how my style is. Um, that sounds so arrogant. I don't mean it that way. I just think I personally haven't regretted. But shoes, yes. I sold a pair of Fear God Vans that I waited hours in line for. I sold them. I wish I hadn't sold them. Biggest fashion regret. And I bought a pair. I literally sold them to buy a new pair. I was like, I can get a new pair. But it was a pair <laughs> that I don't even like that much. The right. red ones, the red slip-ons. So that was a big regret. Um, and I've had other ones here and there, just like certain shoes, like maybe even my off-white blazers because they could be fake. But um, I've had, cer- <laughs> I've had <laughs> certain regrets. Let's not touch on that. Um, but That's yes, I have, had, I have had regrets. And I think you avoid this, like Nick said, being able to define what your style is, right. figure that out through trial and error, and use that lens to kind of determine how you purchase things right. in the future. And with the question, my longest response will probably be to this question, is it possible to buy timeless pieces? And I have a strong opinion on this. I think yes, it is. And there's one main factor that determines a timeless piece to me. And that is the absence of logos. So this is just Mm. an opinion for me. I think timeless pieces can be timeless due to the silhouette. I think if you're buying a piece because of the logo or the graphic, it won't be timeless because either that trend will pass and um, not only the trend may pass, but your style may actually change Right. Um, in, in what you like graphics and what uh, logos you like and what brands you like. So I yeah. think when you buy pieces that either have a small logo or are unbranded mm-hmm. and not obvious as to what the company is that made it, I think that can be timeless because you're really relying on the silhouette. You're really relying on the shape. You're relying on... Um, the color of the garment, you're relying on how it how it fits on your body. So I think that can really be timeless. I have pieces that um, I've bought from years ago that I still love to wear because of how they fit, not because of the logo, not because of the branding on it or the, what was hype at that time, but because the silhouette is nice. It looks good. And um, so I think when you buy timeless pieces, you should be looking for, I think it's cool to buy trendy yeah. certain in the moment pieces with graphics on them. But if you're looking to buy right. a timeless piece, buy one that isn't branded, buy one that is just a shape. I, I also think too, there's, there's a whole money aspect between like, if it's a low investment thing, like if it's a trend and it's a $20 thing to right. be a part of the trend, then it's like, don't worry about like, it not being timeless or it not right. fitting into your style because it's such a low investment. I think when it's things like, I don't know, however much is a lot of money to you. For me, maybe like $50 plus, I really need to think, think yep. through, do I want this yep. item? Because it's like a like a significant amount of investment, like no matter and, how small it is or big to you relatively, yeah. it is a sacrifice for me to get that. So there's sort of like tests that I do practically to figure that out. One that I've done before is the dollar per wear. Okay. <clears throat> so that's like one, would I, 
if I buy things for $50, will I wear it 50 times? If the answer is yes, then that's a good way to avoid it. Right. Um, also, too, not buying it immediately when you see it because honestly, yes. a lot of our purchases, yes. buy it immediately. a lot of our Come purchases are, are out of emotion. Instinctive. Whether that's fear of it not being available, whether that's like hype in the moment where someone's like, you're, you're interested, but also someone's like hyping you, but oh, you need to get it, you need to get it. Like all these different things, like fear of missing out, like all these different yeah. aspects that go into it. Wait like a week. Yeah. If I would after do that, that too. week, you still want it. Yes. And it's not like a fleeting passion. Yes. Then it's a little more justified to it go for patience. it. It takes patience. It really does. And and back, uh, like just ending with the, with the timeless idea, look at the pieces that are timeless regarded among culture. Right. The Air Force One, Stan Smith's, um, Tim's, Tim's <laughs> uh, jeans, right. the white t-shirt. These things like aren't Like a denim jacket. Even at Air Force One, you, you can't even see the logo from that far away because it's yeah. white. But also ask... In a year, in two years from now, will I still wear this? A lot of the times, the answer will be no. no. And then it's like, honestly, it's not even a worthy investment. But don't so always. I, but also, you know, buy some fun pieces then in the moment. Don't only right. buy timeless pieces. So, but your your right. staple should be. But anyway, thank you, Emily, for that question. Um, thank you, everybody who continues to ask questions. We will post um, this yep. next week on our story, uh, asking you for questions, and we'd love your responses so we can answer. Yeah. So again, thank you guys yep. for listening. Uh, if you're watching through YouTube, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. Uh, we'd love your feedback. We'd love to boost the algorithm to get this out here. Because again, yep. every episode, it doesn't end with me and Max. Burnt Denim is a community thing. We want your feedback and be able to spread this knowledge to other people as well. Yes. Just push forward this conversation and dialogue. Yep. Um, if you're listening to this, check us out on Instagram at Burnt Denim. At Burnt Denim, um, baby. Follow us, something. repost. We're going to be posting something to where we can get your feedback on is it justified to wear clothing out outside of your culture? No lifestyle. Uh, outside of your lifestyle. Um, and also... We that did was, that one last that was week. <laughs> um, and also, too different questions that you guys may have. So yes. we'd love to get connected with you, get to know you more, and have some of you guys and more yeah. of your guys' thoughts on the podcast through there. Um, so again, thank you guys. We love you. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next week. We appreciate you.